Hello guys, this is Jesus Fernandez with a new tutorial on how to create the clown pass with Redshift and Maya. This is not a native pass for, for Redshift or a native AOV, so we will need to do a different workflow to create this one. After I upload the puzzle map tutorial, some of you has been asking me on how to create a clown for selection sources as the one that most used for architecture. This is the result. I did a little bit of research and decided to create a script. I asked on the Maya Discord server and Keker Slovakia was really helpful to make the base of this script. I changed some basic parameters and now this is the result that we are going to see here. The script is the messy way to do it. It's the easiest way, but it's the messy way to do it. The second way that we are going to see or check here is using user data. Adrian from the Redshift support forums make the add user attribute and a quick tutorial on how to use the user data. I'm going to put that link for the tutorial on the description. This is the base for what we are going to use here on the tutorial for us. The scene is going to be ready for download for the patrons and it's free to use so you can use everything here, whatever you want. And now let's start with the tutorial. First, this is the render and to make this guy work, we will need to make a selection and the selection should be done with a rect or select everything manually in the outliner. Don't go to select all because it's not going to work for the script. Remember that this is the messy way to do the script. Also, you need to remove the lighting from the system. Let's remove the lighting here. I have a photographic exposure. I'm going to delete this guy and also I'm going to delete the environment. Remember to make a copy for your main scene because we are going to write over everything. So this is not a, 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 a basic AOV, we are making everything again, so that's why we're making it this way. Again, now that we don't have any light on the scene, let's select everything and we will have to run, run the script. This is the script that we're going to use. Uh, it just selects the objects that you have. You have to define the amount of colors that you want and also this just put some surface shaders on the scene so let's call this guy and uh, we're on python and we were going to look for the random color pi now i want to have something like 50 materials or 50 colors with everything selected just go and control enter to run the script you're going to see that it's creating a lot of new materials and it assigns the new materials to everything. If you want to have the possibility to use the glass, you will need to hide the objects, objects that has glass, right? And now that we have everything here, you can see that this guy, it's just created like a lot of new materials. They are not visible there. You can see a lot of new materials here and let's, save this scene and now I'm going to render again. And as you can see, now we have the color ID or the clown pass for Redshift. This is the messy way to make this guy because we have like a lot of new materials. So let's work on the other way to make it. Let's start again. For this kind of work, now I have the scene again, this is not the actual render, this is the old render with the object ID, we are going to need and to create a surface shader that it's going to be the base for everything that we do here. Also, I'm going to create an user data, a Redshift user data color. This user data color is going to read the attribute. I need to go to attributes with the object selected. You can go for the transform attribute and let's add here. And the long name is going to be my color with capital letters, the C, and you have to go for vector. And with that, just click on add. And now we can see here on the extra attributes that we, we have a color. 
Now I can change the parameters of the color red, green, blue and assign the my color here and it's going to read that color. Let's make this guy to be visible and connect this guy here. That was quite fast, but I just wanted to explain that you will need to add an attribute to each object. Adrian did a script that make this thing like automatic. And also I'm going to put the description on the description, the tutorial from Adrian. If you want to go further into the user data color and how to use it with Redshift, I'm just going to go for the object ID or the clown pass. So I'm going to remove the extra attribute that I just put here. You can see the script that Adrian did. Let me show you. This is Adrian's scripts. So for this script, you will have to create an add user attribute, the name of the attribute, we're going to use my color and the attribute type that is going to be three for color, two for vector, one for scalar and zero for integer. As I said, you, I am going to put the link for you to see the tutorial and a random value that it's going to be the seed for the random color. It should look like this at user attribute, my color tree, because it's color type and a random value. So you just copy that into your scripts and with everything selected again, I'm going to remove again the lighting. And now I'm going to select everything on the scene as we did before, but this time I'm going to write the script. For that, we are going to use the add user attribute and the number is three. Okay, I want to add my color, my color three and the random number. So now I just run the script. Oh, you will need to add this attribute to mail. So add user attribute and run this guy and now we have the color value as you can see here on each different material and you can see that on the extra attributes on my color I have a different color for each uh, object and now we will have to connect the out here to the out color so the value that the user attribute is reading that I have to say, tell the attribute here, I'm going to do that after the jump. So let's select everything again. I want to select all the objects on the scene and I'm going to assign the surface shader. And let's render this guy. And we have a black screen. This one, it's because we didn't specify the attribute. I want my color to be the attribute that he is reading. So my color is the attribute. And if I render again, and here I have the object ID again. So we have two ways to work with the object ID and the render looks amazing. And you can use motion blur and also you can use a depth of field. So this was the tutorial on how to make the clone pass, two different ways to make the clone pass. One with Adrian's script that is the cleanest way, as you can see, we just need attributes and just one surface shader. And for the other way, we will need to create a lot of shaders. So I think this way is cleaner, but it's a little bit tricky because you will need to add an attribute, but that's quite easy if you know how to do it. Uh, thank you so much for following the tutorial. Subscribe if you like, and remember, to support me on Patreon and you guys that are patrons there, you will have the ability to download this scene and I will put the links on the description for you to download both the scripts. So thank you guys. Thank you Adrian for the script and also thank you Kaker for the script and happy rendering.